beaming from St. Margaret of Antioch in Belmont and the mission of St. Jerome in Gonzales. I'm Canon Ronald Branch, priest in charge of the parish, welcoming you to Sunday morning meditations for the second Sunday after Epiphany. Let us pray. O oh God, love of unity and author of peace, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it, may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service that at evening we may again give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Call it for the second Sunday after the Epiphany. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in Isaiah chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. Isaiah chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The will of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 36 verses 5 to 10. Psalm 36, 5 to 10. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. 
You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. A reading from the Word of God, written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John chapter 2, reading verses 1 through 11. Glory to Christ, our Savior. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord, praise to Christ our Lord. The readings today on this second Sunday after Epiphany gives us a picture of celebration. 
celebration of relationships. In the first reading out of Isaiah, chapter 62, which means for us that this is the third hand of Isaiah doing this writing, the Jews are slowly coming back to Jerusalem, having been exiled for some time. And as they are coming back home, there is a sense of celebration. They had been out from Jerusalem for a long time, and now that God had relented and they were able to return, living faithful to what the prophets had prophesied, there is now that sense of hope, that sense of celebration. Isaiah says that they will experience that crown of beauty. They will experience that crown of beauty that was so absent from their lives while they were in exile. They are now having a renewed connection with God. A connection that helps them to understand the importance of relationship with God. Then we go to the epistle that talks about the people at Corinth, where Paul is writing this letter and urging them to understand that we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. What is happening here in this chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12, is that there is contention among the people at Corinth with, with regard to the gifts God has given to them. There are those who are saying, if you don't have the Spirit, then you don't have the gift from God. And there's that contentious spirit in the, among them as to who has the best gift. And Paul quells all that in this chapter. And as he comes to the end of the chapter, he talks about, tells them about a still more excellent way in which to serve God. And that introduces us to chapter 13, where he describes that the greatest gift that we can have is that of love. That's Paul trying to get the people at Corinth to understand that they must respect each other's gifts and live together in peace, love, and harmony, celebrating their relationship with God. And then we come to the Gospel. In Cana of Galilee, where Jesus performs his first miracle, attending a wedding feast, the wine gives out, or as we would say, the bar busts. And so they have to find some wine for the feast. Now we have to understand that weddings in those days involved the whole village, the whole community. And it went on for days. It was not a one-day affair for a few hours of celebration. It is against this background that Jesus' mother, Mary, 
comes to him with the situation. The wine has given out. And Jesus queries, what is that to us? My hour has not yet come. That's Jesus talking to his mother. But then she perseveres, she says to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And he looks at the water jars that they have there for purification. And he says to the servants, fill those jars with water. And then he invites them to taste the water. The water has become wine. And the steward has his taste and comments. Usually the best wine is served first. In this case, it seems as though the best wine has been left for last. This was Jesus' first miracle. And it sort of sets a prototype for the other miracles that he performed. For here he takes water and he brings that water into wine. On other occasions he takes a blind man and he heals him so that if before he could not see, now he can see. He reverses the situation. The deaf, if they couldn't hear, now they could hear when he is through with his miraculous power. So what they couldn't hear before, they now hear. That situation has been reversed. The lame couldn't walk, but when he was finished praying with the lame, he could say to them, pick up your bed and walk. Reversing the situation all the time with his miraculous power. That is what Jesus did. Opening the eyes of the disciples so that at the end of the reading we are told, they all believed in him. God speaks to us and reminds us who are in church the importance of living in peace, love, and harmony so that we can celebrate our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. It is not uncommon to find that at the peace sign, some people do not shake their hands and greet other people. Well, they are missing what Paul is saying to us, what Isaiah was saying to us through the Old Testament reading. And what God wants of us to be able to love one another, to share the gifts God has given us in his holy church, and to be able to celebrate when we come to the Eucharist to receive the body and blood of Christ. We have in our Eucharist sentence, just before we receive the communion, a sentence that says, if you are in noise with a fellow parishioner, go and make peace with them before you come and receive the body and blood of Christ. I do not know how many people do that. What I do know is that over and over, there are complaints that some people don't talk to others. And even at the peace sign in church, they fail to greet one another. How can we really celebrate receiving the body and blood of Christ 
when we have that kind of disposition to which, towards our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that is what we have to reflect on. For it's by our love, people will know that we are disciples of Christ. By the love that we have for one another. Not only by saying that with paying lip service, but through the actions that we carry out in our daily lives. God speaks to us and says, let us celebrate. Let us celebrate with the Jews today who went back home and was able to reconnect and restore their relationship with God. Let us celebrate with the people of Corinth who are being told by Paul that it is one body and each part of the body has different functions. But the greatest gift that we can have is that of love. Let us remember this miracle that Jesus performed where all these people from the village came to this wedding feast. And Jesus was able to perform a miracle to give them an, extent, an extended joy through the best wine that he could produce. May God continue to bless and guide us. May God continue to strengthen us to recognize what is expected of us as disciples of Christ. Amen. us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. 
Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share the word of God through this medium so that those who listen will find their lives enriched by your word. May they be strengthened. May they go out and live the risen life, bringing light to those who sit in darkness, hope to those who despair, comfort to those who sorrow, and love to those who are lonely. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. I'm Canon Ronald Branch, thanking you for listening to Sunday Morning Meditations for the second Sunday after Epiphany. I'm hoping that you have a spirit-filled week ahead. Omnipresent, omnipresent, omnipresent.